This is a muscle testing teaching video demonstrating primitive reflex pathways in an attempt to reduce anxiety in patients. In this video, I will be discussing muscle testing to validate the integrity of the monosynaptic reflex arc and cross cord reflexes, while simultaneously using the application of chiropractic care and trigger point therapy to correct abnormal tests to assist de-stressing patients who are suffering from stress. This is my patient Mia. Me is a young female who suffered a heart attack, in part from extreme anxiety and medication. As a consequence of that heart attack, she also suffered from compartment syndrome of the right calf. During this video, she is suffering from pain in her upper back, mid-back, right calf, and mild anxiety. I will be demonstrating the following three muscle tests, the straight leg rectus femoris test, the deep tendon reflex, and the flexor withdrawal reflex. The normal response of all three of these tests is strength of the rectus femoris on the same side or ipsilateral side. Without being confusing, the deep tendon reflex and flexor withdrawal reflex test should cause strength or facilitation on the same side leg and weakness or inhibition of the opposite leg. Now as human beings, we don't wish to be weak. However, the nervous system needs to have the ability to become inhibited. This translates, in layman terms, to a patient being able to calm down. When these tests are abnormal, it's a window into the patient's nervous system, telling the practitioner that the patient's system is not being inhibited through proprioceptive mechanisms, leading to increases in sympathetic output of the brain. In order for the practitioner to be able to utilize these tests, the practitioner must first know the normal response for any test identify an abnormal test, locate and treat the area of dysfunction causing the abnormality, and retest to validate the reflex is normal. This is our case study. I had a fasciotomy. Oh, how come? Um, compartment syndrome. Oh, wow. So the anterior tibialis, like 80% of that was removed. How did the pain come about? The tendon transfer. Basically reinforced my completely lacking dorsiflexion. With that came a lot of pain in there and a lot of overcompensation by my left leg. Heart syndrome came on just by you being in pain one day or how did it? From a heart attack. Really chronic anxiety into ventricular fibrillation. Wow. It was a hell of a week. Are you suffering from anxiety right now? A little bit. I'm going to calm you down. Let's get you treated, get you better. Okay. I'm going to push this leg down towards the table. You're going to push up towards the sky. You ready? Mm -hmm. Push up. At the beginning of her exam, Mia or any patient with their head in the neutral position, all of her muscles should test strong or be facilitated. The color green will represent strength or facilitation. Reddish brown will represent weakness or inhibition. The picture on the left demonstrates a female patient and green is placed on the muscles that are tested during this exam rectus femoris, gluteus medius, pectoralis cavicular division, and latissimus dorsi muscles. Now I could and have tested all the muscles on patients before. However, this is the basic pattern I start with on each patient. All of Mia's muscles should test strong with her head straight forward in this neutral position. The brownish red spot over her right rectus femoris indicates weakness or inhibition, and with her head in the neutral position, this is abnormal. As we will notice, all of her muscles on the right side of her body that will be tested in this video are inhibited. This is also abnormal. Push up. Muscle testing is not 100% accurate. You'll notice in my videos that I usually double or triple test the patient. The reason for that is because I want to make certain that the muscle test was performed properly. The patient and or doctor may be distracted for a moment and not focus on the test or the patient tries half-heartedly. Mia's right rectus femoris is still inhibited during her second test, as is her right gluteus medius, hip flexors, her right pectoralis. Go. All right, sir. So far, it's all on your right. And her right latissimus dorsi. Giving a visual representation of that we can see that the left side of her body is strong and working properly, while the right side of her body is inhibited. This is a tuning fork exam. I am comparing sensations from the left to the right side of the body. Now in a perfect exam, in correlation with her muscle testing, 
she would have desensitization of the tuning fork on the right side of her body. Is this more equal or less? Equal. If that's a 10. Less. Here I want to check her body temperature because equal heat of the extremities are an indication of blood flow. Blood flow can be an indication of brain function. Now obviously she's had the surgery on her right calf, so her right lower extremity is cold in relation to her left foot. Let's, uh, we're gonna do a little simple treatment. Here I'm giving Mia a mild treatment, adjusting her toes, feet, and bilateral knees. Then I'm going to re-examine her because I want to see the impact of the treatment on her nervous system and what her exam looks like after treatment. Now after treatment, the right side of her body is starting to facilitate and work normally. Push up for me. Push out for me. Good. Push towards the door. Much better. Okay. This is a passive right-sided cerebellar exercise. I've been out here before. I love it. It's peaceful compared to Santa Monica for sure. Mia's right hip flexors tested strong after treatment and this is normal. Tip your chin for me and relax. One more. Oh, how awesome. Here I'm doing a little motion palpation and mobilization of her upper spine. i give you a stretch, you relax, I got you. Play that for me. A little stretching of her upper cervical muscles before delivering the adjustment at the level of C1. There's a high probability you're going to get a little warm, okay? Mm-hmm. You relax. Going to give you a little push. That was it. That was your first chiropractic adjustment. How was that? Great. I'm going to pull, you're going to pull this foot to your back. Don't let me straighten your leg. Okay, that was good. Try this side for me. Don't let me pull. Those are good. I'm going to give you a little scratch. This is a galant reflex. This reflex should cause inhibition or weakness of the hamstring muscles on the same side. It did not. This is abnormal. I'm going to push her sacrum in a direction in an attempt to determine which direction it needs to be adjusted, then go back and reperform the galant reflex. Remember, the practitioner needs to know the normal response for any test, identify an abnormal test, locate and treat the area of dysfunction causing the abnormality, and retest to validate that the reflex is normal. I'm performing trigger point therapy on her rectus spinae muscles. This is our common friend who does not wish to be identified. Hi, Evan. Hey, man. Are you better? I'm going to bend this leg. I'm gonna pull you towards me, okay? I won't let you fall. I know it's a little startling, but it's your first time. I'm gonna give you a little weight, okay? As always in all of my videos, regardless if it is spoken or not, I would like to publicly thank Dr. Michael Allen for all his instruction many years ago. This right flexor withdrawal reflex will cause facilitation of the right rectus femoris, and simultaneously cause inhibition of the left rectus femoris muscle, inhibition of the right gluteus medius, and facilitation of the left gluteus medius. This is only indicating the lower torso and not incorporating the upper torso in this video. Stroking the left foot reverses the pattern. With the left flexor withdrawal reflex, we get facilitation of the left rectus femoris muscle, inhibition of the right rectus femoris, inhibition of the left gluteus medius, and facilitation of the right gluteus medius. Remember, muscle testing is not 100% accurate, and the patient and I were distracted having a conversation with our friend. Initially, the test looked normal. However, with repetitive testing, I could feel it start to go soft. Tried this one. And then it went weak. Go. This is abnormal. With this patient, I suspected it was her left fifth metatarsal that was articulating inappropriately. It's a little uncomfortable, okay? I made the adjustment. 
and went back and retested the reflex. Now it's normal. There we go. Go walk real quick. I want to, I want to see how you feel. And go for a little loop in the lobby. Okay. See how you feel. Feel calmer? Yeah. More mellow? Yeah, definitely. That's what you do next time you have anxiety, come see me, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Brother, thank you.